Well, 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 you have finally got here. You are listening to the Erskine Music Podcast. Here by popular demand, we discuss life, culture, Christ, and of course, music. These half-hour broadcasts are perfect for a commute, coffee time, chat, or any other gap in your schedule where you want to put great content. So without further ado, let's join the conversation today, already in progress. Wait for the beat to drop so that we can begin the Erskine Music Show today. I'm so excited that you guys are joining me today. So... Let's get started with the Erskine Music Show. All right. Thank you guys so much. Again, the Erskine Music Show, we're going to be balling out today. I wanted to begin because this is a political episode today by letting you guys know that the two things you're not supposed to talk about in our culture and society, it's kind of rude, it's kind of a cultural zeitgeist, you're not supposed to do these things, is politics and then religion. So the two things that we often talk about on this show is politics and religion, because I could care less about the cultural zeitgeist. I care about taking every thought captive and making it obedient to Christ. And so we will drive that point home throughout the show today. And that's why I'm excited that you're here and that I'm here. But also, we got some special guests that are here, at least the alter ego, who celebrated a birthday yesterday, known as Big Head. Big Head, how you doing today? So glad that you could join the show. Big Head is the alter ego that keeps me out of trouble. From time to time, there's things that I want to say on this show that are inappropriate. Yes, Big Head will warn me before you say that. There's an audience of people watching all around the world who are going to hear you say that. So maybe you shouldn't say that. And Big Head reminds me from time to time that, uh, you know, sometimes your jokes aren't that funny. People aren't laughing at those things. They're crying. And so Big Head also reminds me to pray. And so this is the the 1 Timothy 2, 1 and 2 episode as well. We're going to pray for our leaders. Thank you, Big Head, for reminding me of that. We are going to pray for our leaders. Uh, so if I don't get around to it before this episode is over, the takeaway for this is we're going to be praying for Kevin McCarthy, his family, constituents, and all those that are uh, re- related to his team. So thank you, Big Head, for being the voice of conscience on the show. thought I'd begin today with a couple of funny definitions about politicians and some dolphins, because dolphins always make an Erskine music... Okay, so that was like SOS and Morse code for dolphins today. Here we go. Uh, Some funny definitions about politicians. And if you want to look in the show notes for today, look, I've been up for a long time. (laughs) I celebrated my birthday, but that was yesterday. Today, I've been in the I've been in the studio grinding, getting some definitions for you guys. And all of the show notes are there in the uh, description for the show today. So if you guys want to go check out where it is that I got any of these videos, watch them in their entirety, which I would recommend that you do or any of the devotions or things that you want to watch in their entirety, go ahead and do that by following those links that I put in the show notes. So you can see how literally I constructed, we built this city on rock and roll and Erskine music, but we also built it on a lot of show notes. So here's a couple of definitions that I think is kind of funny. And I am watching the comment section. So if you guys want to say anything during this time, that's great as well. But here we go. Some funny definitions about politicians, the government. Um, <laughs> There's a definition of government as government by the worst kinds of people, government by the worst kinds of people. And when we think about government in general, there is when I tell people I want to run for the president of the United States, people one look at me, then they laugh because that is kind of funny. It's probably I probably could do it. It's funny also because I've heard a lot of people, a lot, a lot of people, not even just the dolphins. But a lot of people tell me, why would you want to run for that office? Not only would you be considered one of the worst human beings because of running for that office, but you'd be surrounded by the worst human beings. And so there's a word called kakistocracy, kakistocracy, kakistocracy. Say it fast. Say it with me. Fact. Kakistocracy. Kakistocracy (laughs) is one of the unexplicably uncommon words that probably we should have learned when we were kids. Uh, It boggles the mind that children 
uh, according to this report, are not taught this word in grammar school. They should be taught this word. Like when you're studying words like cat, dog, mouse, mouse, being able to form letters, you should be able to say the word kakastra. Uh, it, 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 it goes along with uh, and seems to be that there's a large number of people in every generation who believe themselves to be saddled with kakastra. <laughs> Kakistocracy. It is Kakistocracy. And it is government by inept leadership. And uh, if that doesn't sum up every stage of development, and I don't know why my teleprompter is not working, but 1644 uh, is when this word comes into modern parlance. It is government by inept leadership. And so I don't know why I don't know that word or didn't know that word until today, because for much of government leadership, it seems like it's inept. And if you see what's going on in the house these days, it also seems like it's quite inept what's going on there. All right. Here's another word that you may be familiar with. I wasn't familiar with this word because I don't talk this way on this show. Big Head says, you don't talk this way. But there's a word called pornocracy. Pornocracy. The definition of the word pornocracy is government by harlots. I'm going to just go on. I'm going to move on <laughs> my definition. Government by harlots. All right. Implomania. Implomania. This is a word that should be used. I don't know if this word is on the SAT, but it should be. Implomania. Definition. It's a mania for holding public office. And here's a little bit of, uh, you know, just background and research about this word. One might very well make the argument that any person who chooses to subject themselves to the myriad of indignities um, like fundraising, going door to door to meet constituents and offering their names for an elected office suffers from a form of implomania. However, this word tends to be used for people who really, and it says this in the notes, really, really, really want to be elected. You implomaniacs that are out there. I know there's some animaniacs who watch this on <laughs> our Twitch platform, but there's some implomaniacs who want to be elected to public office. Would that be me? Okay. Another definition really quickly here is um, throttle bottom. Throttle bottom. I love every part of this word, except the word doesn't actually describe what should happen to politicians. But throttle bottom is an innocuously inept and futile person who is in public office. Big head. I think this may describe some of what our situation is as we find it in real time and space in 2023. Throttle bottom. Despite what the word sounds like, no bottoms were actually throttled in the making of this word, unfortunately. It comes from the name Alexander Throttle Bottom, who was a character invented by George Kaufman in the Maury Riskind of 1931 musical. This comes from a musical. Um, the musicals in 1931, it was the musical of the i sing and so there is a certain measure of that word in which i hopefully in 2023 we can reinvent words because you know we do that all the time now reinvent this word and apply it to our government officials all right so kevin mccarthy ousted as the speaker of the house some people don't care some people do care but I think as Christians, I think I can make a case for why we should care about things like this that are happening, this particular thing that has happened, and why it matters in terms of leadership, discipleship even. And we're going to talk about some of those things as we continue on throughout the show. And so I want to give a Bible verse very early on at the beginning of this show and talk about why this subject matters, matters before we get to our Bible time. Uh, in First Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 and 2, it says, I urge then of all that petitions, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings and for those in authority, that we may live peaceful lives, quiet lives, and all godliness and holiness. So let's pray, and then we'll get to our devotion for today. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We thank you, Lord, for uh, the opportunity to uh, pray for Kevin McCarthy, to pray for our leaders. To pray for others in whom, from a public standpoint, yes, we can evaluate what it is they've done, but they are people. 
who have an eternal soul. And if this leads Kevin McCarthy in the direction of humility and trusting Christ, we're excited about that. If it leads in a direction that's opposite than that, we are not excited about that as believers. And so we would just pray, come thy kingdom and be done thy will so that you would guide, lead, and direct and receive the honor that you deserve from every corner of creation, every mouth of the politicians. You are King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, that certainly gives a sense of why people enjoy this show. Very engaging, very heartfelt. We will return to the conversation in a few moments. But first, let's thank our sponsors and you for all your awesome support. Moody Radio's Dawn and Steve Morning Show. Life Action Ministries. Fellowship of Christian Athletes and Holt International. Thanks so much to our partners who make such a difference. Thanks, Jason. This is Don. And this is Steve of Don and Steve in the Morning on Moody Radio. You can find us online at donandsteve.org, or you can listen through the Moody Radio app. And as friends of the Erskine Music Show, we always enjoy the variety of topics our friend has on his show. So on behalf of our show, thanks, Erskine, for bringing great Christ-centered topics to the people. All right. Let's get back to the show. This is where and it gets good. And for the gospel choir today, all they need to say is, All right. All right. This show is going pretty well. The internet's still working and all the things are happening today. So we got to have Erskine music. After the Erskine music, we're coming in with our top story. And listen, we're coming in hot. I'm not wasting a lot of time on this because I got a lot of show notes today. And a lot of things that I think you as a believer need to hear about this. This is a situation. There are situations that come and go. There'll be situations today. But in every situation, the development of a worldview, a biblical worldview, I believe will help us as we begin to disciple, as we begin to discern, and as we begin to destroy the weak arguments of this world. I just came up with that. That was three Ds. I'm telling you. I do this stuff with, okay, I'm just quit talking about what it is that I do and just do it. Yay! All right, our top story for today is Kevin McCarthy being ousted. And what is, um, a historic first here. Um, two times there's been indictments of the acting speaker of the house, but never has this happened before. So I want to just dial this back for just a second and ask the question, what does the speaker of the house actually even do? Uh, there's probably some people who are out there who are wondering speaker of the house. I know that's probably a government position, but I don't really know what they do or why that's really important in American government and or politics. Uh, well, I would say that's supremely important. Here's a couple of things that you should know. What, When you ask the question, what does the Speaker of the House do? First of all, first of all, we need to recognize this. Let me get this up on here so you guys know. I'm talking talk now. We doing the thing. Um, they are the authoritative, invisible spokesman for the majority party in the House. Speakers articulate their agenda and their legislative action in office, uh, as well as Washington and to the public. The speaker, secondly, manages the business on the floor and navigates legislative rules, uh, structuring House debate in a way that will be hopefully to the advantage of the legislative parties. Third, the speaker oversees everything from accounting to procurement for the House. So what essentially does that even mean? Because we're not there in government to see all these different things take place. We're not there to see the procedure that takes place. We're not there seeing a lot of different things that we just assume are working fine without us being there so that we can go and do what it is. They're representing us there. Uh, and so this representative type of government that we have means that they're going to go do their political things and we're going to go do the Erskine music show. We're going to go do tours. We're going to go do work in factories. We're going to work stay at home moms. We're going to work in schools, all the different things that we're going to do because we elect them to go and represent us for other people. And so that's got to work a certain way. You can think about it. It's, it's kind of like a, you know, there's a three ring circus going on there, which is probably not an inaccurate way to describe what's going on in government and in Washington. They're kind of the director of the circus. They're kind of making sure that things continue to flow. And OK, we're going to vote on this. And OK, we've taken enough time on this. And so it's it's really kind of a hands on position coming out of that proceeding and saying, OK, this is what we did. 
making sure that you talk to the American public and telling them, okay, this is what we've been doing. Everything is working. Oh, everything is just great. Um, that is the role of the Speaker of the House. Unfortunately, because <laughs> uh, this position is a pretty influential position, you have the President of the United States, the Vice President of the United States, and if something were to happen to them, the Speaker of the House would then become the President of the United States. And so to have what is essentially the third person in power being ousted from their position, okay, there's another person that is there now acting. Uh, they'll have to take a vote and it'll have to go all, through all different machinations again. But essentially to have that person being ousted means we have lost faith in McCarthy's ability to work with the proceedings that are going on there and to be transparent with the American public. And so Matt Gates, a uh, soundbite that I'm going to show here in just a little bit, another representative has taken issue with this and says, wait a minute, among our constituents, we don't believe that you are being transparent with the American people. We don't believe that you're being honest with the American people. And we don't believe that you're doing your job to the degree that the American people deserve. Now, that's all political speak, because obviously, if you're trying to get somebody fired from their job, you don't think they're doing a great job. Whether or not he truly believes that or not, he's made that argument so convincing that he got the Republicans and the Democrats who are watching this fire happen go, we're not saving this guy. Goodbye. And so he's out. And so I want to, Matt Gates is going to talk about a couple of these things and he can give statistics to these. But what are we facing these days? And I'm going to make it really plain for you guys so that you guys know not only are they speaking to this, and this is actually, I think this is actually really a good thing. Not only are they talking about this in Washington, but we're talking about this baby at our dinner table. So we're, we're looking at inflation in our culture, and in our society. This is how it gets really practical for Erskine music and really practical for a number of people who are watching. That inflation hits you in a variety of ways. The reason why my shirts are now $25 instead of $20 is because if I continue to sell my shirts at $20 for the cost that it takes, and this is all, look, I wish history classes would watch this show from time to time. The reason why it takes more money to make the shirts is because of shipping, the cost of product, supply de chain demands, and a variety of other things. And so if it costs $18, and I'm just using figures here, just it doesn't cost as much. We're probably somewhere around 13, 13.35% or $13.35 per shirt. But anyway, you don't need to know all that. Let's just use round number. If it costs me $18 to make the shirt, and then I'm going to use gas and fuel and all those different things to get the shirt to you, to get it displayed so that when I play the show, you look at the shirt and you draw, buy the shirt. If you're buying the shirt for $20, I'm pretty much losing money every time I put a shirt out there. So if I'm in a position where I'm losing money for the things that I'm doing, I'm not a very good business person. That's not good stewardship of God's resources. And so I either need to generate more money, which wisely and economically I should do that. So in order to sell that shirt for what it costs per what it is valued at, I need to sell it at 25. The reason why I bring that up to you today is to simply say this. In our culture in our society, you go to the grocery store and what used to cost you $30 to buy just simple groceries for a day or a couple of days in your, your family now costs you $50, $60 or $70 for those same supplies. So inflation hits us in a variety of different ways. And the American public is feeling that I'll let you know, we're feeling that <laughs> at the 4115. So why does that even matter? Why is that such a hot button issue? Because I'm going to say a name here. And this is not to give, uh, I'm not decrying what is happening in Ukraine, but Ukraine spending, government spending for Ukraine has topped the billions. And I call it in my notes, wartime spending. We are essentially at war with Russia. Nobody wants to say that, but it's a proxy war. And what I mean by proxy war is it's a war that's fought against somebody that we don't like, somebody that has a different political ideology than us, that has world power, that could potentially challenge our world power in certain regards or in certain regions of the world. And so to keep them off balance or to keep them at bay, we are not 
marshaling up our troops and drafting people into the forces so that we can fight against them. What we're doing is we're sending billions of dollars over to Ukraine. We're sending our actual tanks and supplies and fighter planes over to Ukraine with billions of dollars <clears throat> so that they can fight that war on their territory and we don't have to worry about it. At some point, somebody's got to call the bluff. And I'm surprised that Putin hasn't called the bluff. All of these nations are sending all of these things to Ukraine so they can fight against Russia. Ukraine is not that powerful. They're resolved, but they're not that powerful as it relates to Russia. The reason why they've been made powerful is because we keep sending things over there. Okay, so you look at that and you say, it's a hard, I'm having a hard time buying things at the grocery store. That hits home. But we seem to have no problem spending billions of dollars and sending it to Ukraine. I'm not saying whether that's right or wrong at this point, but what I'm simply saying is that's felt by the American people. That's felt by our representatives who the people are saying, wait a minute, what, can I ask some transparent questions about how things are going? And so when we come to a situation like we just came to, and I was on tour, paid attention to it scantily until I got back, where we are facing a government shutdown. And I began, because I'm with people, hearing people talk about the government shutting down. For us, all of those people who are paid by the government with regularity, funded by the government, and do government jobs to keep our economy and our society going, that government was about to shut down. Meaning, you're going to work, there's no pay. Or you're not going to work. There's no job that can be done right now. And so a very real situation facing American people, facing our culture, facing our society. And so Kevin McCarthy kind of strikes an 11th hour deal with the Democrats and says, all right, we're going to come out, we're going to... We're going to vote to fund our government and keep it going. But that whole Ukraine situation, we're just going to talk about that later. What do you mean we're going to talk about it later? The Republicans are saying, oh, yeah, you know, we'll, we'll get around to that. He struck up some deal with them and we're going to get in the next spending bill. We'll have clarity about what that is. Wait a minute. Why are we passing a spending bill about having clarity about what it is that we're doing now? And so the government deficits, the ineptitude of leadership that is going on here. I'm going to play a soundbite by Matt Gates, and this is from Officer Tatum. Subscribe to him if you dare, but he is a spicy tomato, and I kind of like it when he does things like this. I don't agree with everything that Officer Tatum says. Sometimes I don't agree with anything that Officer Tatum is saying, but on this one, I think maybe if his passion is not justified, because I don't know that I'm this passionate about the subject matter, at least his points, I think, are right. So let me uh, get you guys this video. All right, this is Officer Tatum talking, and he's showing the Matt Gates soundbite. Then it's going to go into a Kevin McCarthy soundbite, and then I'm going to let him ball out on his his situation here. So here we go, Matt Gates. To whose benefit? People have called you a narcissist. People say that is to your benefit alone. Is it to the benefit of you and to Donald Trump? It's the benefit of this country that we have. Man, that was a hot button question right there. Matt Gates, you're a narcissist, and this is the benefit of Donald Trump. Wow. <laughs> Way to ask a question there, man from Scotland. I have a better Speaker of the House than Kevin McCarthy. Kevin McCarthy couldn't keep his word. He made an agreement in January regarding the way Washington would work, and he violated that agreement. We are $33 trillion in debt. We are facing $2.2 trillion annual deficits. We face a de-dollarization globally that will crush Americans, working class Americans. Kevin McCarthy is a feature of the swamp. He has risen to power by collecting special interest money and redistributing that money in exchange for favors. Uh, we are breaking the fever now, and we should elect a speaker who's better. So we but I truly still consider myself to be the luckiest man. So this is Kevin McCarthy, his tone. Well, he took some juice out of, they took some juice out of his rear end by ousting him as the Speaker of the House. Um, and so listen to his tone and listen to his words and listen to his justification for what it is that he's done. And I'm, I'm again, we need to pray for our leaders. We prayed for him. Uh, but at the same time, my contention is, what are we talking about when we talk about leadership? There must be, and this from a Christian worldview, transparency. There must be accountability. Look, there are ladies who, uh, if I say a bad word on this show, they'll let me know. That's accountability. There's brothers that will come up to me and they'll say, hey, uh, I need you to do this. I need you to look at this. I need you to think about this. Accountability. Accountability are values 
and I'm going somewhere with this, accountability are values that we as Christians will say, no, we're not just accountable uh, on Sunday, but we're accountable all throughout our lives. We're accountable when we go to our workplace. And as a representative of Christ, those things should be truthful. Those things should be accurate. Those things should be in keeping with uh, the demeanor and comportment of a follower of Christ doing their job. And so I'm going to come back to that in just a few moments. I'm going somewhere with this today. I have a theme and there's something that I want to strike and something that I want to say that is profoundly important for believers. Keep following. Well, you probably already know that when you hear that sound, there's music on the way. After all, this is kind of a music show. Sit back and enjoy. All the music can be easily found on your favorite digital distribution channels. Turn up the volume and here we go. could rise to be the 55th speaker, not get an internship, and be able to fight for the American public. So it was my greatest honor to be able to do it. I love my conference well. I love the be able to ability. I've been a part of 
the leadership team for quite some time. We won two majorities. And by the way, from all indications, he's not going to seek reelection meaning he'd have to go around and he'd have to try to curry favor and maybe try to strike some deals so that he could get back in um, and cast a revote and all those different things. I'm thinking that he's thinking from all reports that what's done is done. And so this is a historic first in American politics and the history of our nation. As leader, I'm proud of the fact we only gained races, only gained seats. I'm proud of the fact as a Republican leader, we elected more women. We elected more minorities. We expanded the base. I'm proud of the fact that for the five years I had a leader, two election cycles, we gained five more seats in California, five more in New York. We won in places no one thought we could win. The same thing you would underestimate me. You always said we'd lose each time around. We kept gaining. I intend to make sure that we gain and keep the majority in the next cycle as well. With that, I am. I am. Okay. So Officer Tatum is going to come in. He's a spicy meatball. But let me do this real quick. Make sure that comments in the comment section are turned on. For some reason, there's a lot of comments that came in yesterday that I did not see either in real time or comments that came in a little bit after the show was over. And if you want to comment on the show after the show is over, that's fine. I just can't comment on in real time. So if you're watching out there in real time, Central Standard Time, 845 to 930, jump in the comment section and I'll try to chop it up with you. I'm watching the comment queue there. Um, but here's Officer Tatum. And again, he's a spicy meatball, but there's some things that he said, even he says. A broken clock got to be right twice a day. Even he says some things and I'm like, you know what? As Christians, we need to hear this. As Americans, we need to hear this. And when I run from president, these are some of the same things that I'm going to say. Um, and so let's hear Officer Tatum say some of these things. And then we'll get to another soundbite that I want to react to and hopefully get your reactions. If you're watching this live, then jump in and let us know what you think about any of the government things that are going on right now, in particular, because I'm talking about a government McCarthy, and I don't claim to be a political expert about everything that's going on here. But in this particular situation, I still don't claim to be an expert. I'm just watching a historic first take place in America. And I'm making some commentary for Christians based on what I think we can take away from this. And so I'm going to get to that in just a few moments. But listen to what Tatum says. I'm sick and tired of us even having conversations like this about feckless Republicans. Feckless Republicans, weak, no spine, no activity, no ability to get anything done. That's what he's calling feckless Republicans. There's no reason whatsoever that Biden hadn't been impeached already. There's no reason whatsoever that we cannot get this border secured. There's no reason whatsoever that this is the first time that there's been a, a legit investigation in the Hunter Biden and Joe Biden. There's no reason whatsoever in God's green earth that these things should be occurring only right now. That means that Republicans have been doing nothing. That's a strong statement. There is, what is that story that is told of the guy who, you know, tells his wife, gets his briefcase, puts his suit on every day. And he goes to the office, but he doesn't tell his wife there is no office to go to because he's been fired from his job. So every day he gets up, he puts his suit on, he gets his briefcase, he goes out the door. Honey, see you later. Wife thinks he's working. He's, he's grinding every day. So proud of you. He's got nowhere to go because he has no job, but he hasn't told his wife. He hasn't told people around him. I don't have a job. I'm just putting on a show. I'm just putting on a suit, putting on a tie, grabbing my briefcase, going out the door, doing all the machinations of work when I have no work to go to. I'm doing no work throughout the day. And that is illustrative, I think sometimes, of what is actually going on in Washington. Oh, the suit is on. The press conferences are had. But I'm not sure there's always anything that's really going on that is beneficial for the American people. When Officer Tatum is talking about some very simple things and whether or not you're on that impeachment train and how much you've listened to that, if 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 Trump can be indicted, impeached, and you know that presidents don't get impeached. That's just something that a political volley that people throw out there when they think there's something that's been done that Trump wasn't going to get impeached. Uh, Joe Biden wouldn't get impeached. So would we be wasting time doing that? That's a matter of 
circumstances which we can discuss those kind of things. But the other thing is border security. Listen, I went to Whataburger twice. I probably went to Whataburger twice in one day. I'm from Texas and I love the nation. I love being in the nation. I love being from the nation and I love going back to the nation. So for those of you who in mid-October are going to be uh, at the revival that I'm going to be at, praise the Lord. Those of you whom I just got finished playing with in Houston and the Dallas area, it's great. Love being in the nation. But at the bottom of the nation, there is a border I'm going to call it crisis, ineptitude of leadership, ineptitude of vision about how to address the subject matter. And uh, I'm not going to go out publicly at this point and tell you what my campaign uh, strategy is going to be when I run for president in relationship to border security. But I think we will solve this issue fairly and finally when I become president of the United States. Nonetheless, listen, border security. We have launched and i'm not a conspiracy theorist and so i'm gonna just go ahead and say we've actually launched we've actually launched people into space on rockets and they've orbited around the, the thing and then slingshot and then go to the moon and then take the orbiter and they get all the orbiter and they bounce around one small step for man one giant leap for mankind i think that happened i think we actually landed on the, we have put people on the moon but we cannot stop people from coming across the border we cannot figure out a process system, how to identify who's coming here seeking asylum. We can't figure out a humane process for figuring out how to navigate the flow of people. We have smart cars, cars that will drive themselves and pick you up. We have technological innovations of the kind of which even the Jetsons back in the 1970s would be have be impressed with. We are the Jetsons. AI. Why don't we just ask chat GPT to solve the border? It would come up with a solution that's better than the things that people are actually doing. Jump in the comment section if you want to. Argue with me if you want to. That's even better. But you know you can't argue with me because you know that people putting on the suit, people putting on the tie, People doing whatever it is that they do when they look like they're working, but they're not actually working that are out there. They're not actually getting anything. To, they're not even trying to get stuff done. Let's go, baby. Sorry. I get a little bit fired up on the show. And I, I, I don't want to hear nobody tell me anything different. Republicans have not been effective like they should have been, including Donald Trump. Yeah, I said it. I'm just going to let that sit there for all of the Republican loving idolatrous Christians that are out there that I hear you talk more about Donald Trump than I hear you talk about Jesus. And for the people out here in the Trump cult, just turn the channel now and come back to me later. Every Republican stunk it up. And now we're begging for an opportunity to have a chance at the table. When we had a chance at the table, we didn't serve them like we should have. When we had a chance at the table, we didn't investigate like we should have. We didn't put an FBI director in place like we should have. We didn't put an attorney general in place like we should have. Whose responsibility is that? Wait a minute. Officer Tatum, he's cooking. And I'm not even playing the music. Hang on a second. Tatum, he's cooking. Let him cook. Let him cook. Let him cook for a, a couple of moments. That the president of the United States of America. Now, yeah, Trump did a lot of great things, but we dropped the freaking ball. It don't matter that you scored a touchdown if you lose the freaking game. I, I'm, I'm sick. Like I'm sick of us kissing the. Ashy elbows of people that do not deserve it. <laughs> he almost lost it. And okay, 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 okay. He cooking. He cooking too much on this thing. I don't know if. Listen, I don't know if people are really ready to hear this. I don't know. It changed the tone of my cooking music. I must. I must have too many things up. It like went from like two octaves, like a, a half, half, a step and a half lower. <laughs> when I started putting the cooking music on there, but he's cooking folks as believers. 
the miraculous power of salvation in our lives, regeneration of our heart, fidelity and trust, a new creation we are trusting in Christ must mean that we look at we look at the facts we 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 look at the culture we look at the society and we approach that with a unveiled kind of perspective and here's what i mean by that if you're democratic if you're progressive whatever you want to call yourself the donkey And you're doing a good job so far as we understand it to be truth, so far as we understand it to be in keeping with the worldview of Christianity, then I can tell you that you are doing a good job. If you're not, then I can tell you you're not. But so too, the Republicans, if they're doing a good job, if they're moving with honesty and integrity and character and truth in life, then I can tell you you're doing a good job. I don't have... There's all of this nonsense that's going on. If they're Democrat, we can't say anything good about them. Yeah, they're Democrat. They're maybe not even being saved. And so, therefore, we, we just say, everybody that's a Republican, they're doing a good job as well. Finally, we get in a Republican that's calling out another Republican and saying, hey, listen, I'm willing to say, we're not, he's not doing a good job. And he's one of us. This is Officer Tatum on his show talking about the fact that in some things, Donald Trump didn't do a good job. Finally, can we get somebody that's conservative to actually come out and say, you know what? Donald Trump is a chump in some areas. Get off of my screen, Donald Trump. Look, pray for him. Because he needs the Lord. But pray for me too. Because I do not like. And do not understand. Why Christians have become sycophants. And listen to this guy. Stop sharing this. Let's get to the CNN soundbite. We're at 48 minutes. We got to get done with this show. Be using up all of my. <laughs> I'll be using up all of my. Memory. On shows like this. Let's share this real quick. This is CNN. And they're talking about what comes next in this situation. For that. November 17th, pay attention to that. First. As I talk to you right now, the House does not have a permanent Speaker of the House for the first time in our history, but it does have an acting Speaker of the House. That and is who Patrick is that? McHenry, a McCarthy Patrick ally. McHenry. There is a little known statute that came into place after September 11th in which speakers of the House must submit a list to the clerk. It's mm -hmm. kept secret of who they would like to succeed them in case something happens to them. Uh, Patrick McHenry is the number one, on number one name on that list. He is technically the acting speaker right now. I'm told he is not in the line of presidential succession. So what we have here basically, Jeff, is... A question mark. How long will it take to get a speaker? I'm told that McCarthy would like to run for speaker again. So I think no. our viewers can imagine what we may be in for. A series of votes like we had no. in January, potentially. That ain't happening. McCarthy tries to convince some out. of those uh, people who voted against him today to vote present, allow him somehow to win. I'll tell you, that's a long shot for him. And you hit it right on the head, Jeff. He ain't doing that. This is all a huge risk for so many parts of government, especially 45 days. This does increase the risk exponentially of a shutdown but also it's a problem for ukraine for the money that you what i tell you what i tell you what did i tell you listen you watch this show for 45 minutes and i'm gonna save you 45 hours of the repetitive news cycle that keeps going on and on and on and it becomes drivel in the background i will save you i can give you some shortcuts into how all of these things work in the government ukraine is a big deal we are hemorrhaging money if i went out and i said you know what i'd like to buy a car i, I, I like to buy a car um i drive a 2009 toyota corolla gets good gas mileage but you know it's up and down in terms of mechanics uh, we drive a 2010 toyota sienna fantastic vehicle but they both have well over 200,000 miles on them which is fine doing the Lord's work and we're getting getting out there and doing things. I'd like to buy a vehicle. 
So I'm going to take my credit card. I hope you're listening to this, Dave Ramsey. I'm going to take my credit card, and I know we can't afford it. We can't really afford the payments, but I'm going to buy a car with my credit card. As a matter of fact, I oh, I'm not going to hold this credit card up. There's fraud people out there. This credit card right here, <laughs> it's still got some space on it, uh, barely. But I'm going to take it. I'm going to buy a car. And, you know, our appliances are getting a little old around the house. And, you know, we have a house church. And so we need a couple of couches. We need a couple. Of, I'm going to buy, you know, the TV screen is a little small. And I want people to see that when we worship. All good things. Boom, put it on the credit card. And we just keep spending and spending and spending. Reach the limit on that credit card. Can't pay for that. So get another credit card so I can pay for that credit card. And the debt just keeps ballooning and ballooning and ballooning. That's what's going on in our society. That's what's going on in our country. Fiscal irresponsibility. And this is not just Donald Trump. But this is president after president after president after president. You keep going back in the succession of presidents, all fiscally irresponsible. And we look at that and we say, well, we're going to spend billions of dollars for self-inflicted wounds like the border crisis that we're experiencing. Self-inflicted wounds where we're going to actually just take money and we're just going to send it almost indiscriminately. Listen, I'm not one of those people. I'll just put my cards on the table. I'm not one of those people that's not coming out and saying that we should not support what's going on in in Ukraine, but I have some serious questions as to the, the amount of billions that we are spending in Ukraine when we have problems feeding people in our own country. Listen, I've traveled around this country recently, and there is a homeless epidemic. If it's out of sight, out of mind for a lot of people, but I'm beginning to see more and more homeless people, shiftless, houseless, wandering around in society all through across this country, and it's not just in the places that you would expect them to be. Yeah, they're there. But there are other places as well. And so we're letting our own country go to pot and we're spending all this money. They they hit on it. It's a problem for Ukraine, because if we can't fund our own government, we can't also put in the spending bill what we're going to do in Ukraine. Ukraine is waiting to get hoping to get as it fights its war with Russia. She's not wrong. She's not wrong. That's a problem then for Taiwan. So the kind of domino effects of this situation are massive. And I think we were going to be obviously following this, talking about this a lot. So many things. Uh, impeachment is something rare, but we have never seen a vote like this in U.S. history. All right. So there's that. Get to the screen. We have come to the end of this episode. Don't miss a final word from Erskine. Hey guys, tell your friends about this show. And as always, I look forward to your interactions. Please contact us as you are able. We love to hear from you. Okay, friends, let's go and make a difference.